this one uh i think i think this one's okay i just the problem well actually it's not really a problem i just think um you know you got to be using a hard stop like if you're if your risk is is the stuff move you know put that hard stop in um i can tell that it wasn't a hard stop because it hit the top of the stuff and then he ended up covering lower but make sure like on this one i think it's really going to be a lot about hard stops because there's a lot of good traders here who we kind of review on weekend mentoring each week. But the problem is, is that they take their hard stop out for one second and then they just get blown out of the water. Um, this thesis, I think is okay. Um, it, it was a, it, it did stuff. It did kind of go lower. It was a hot chick. Um, you know, I, I don't believe Alex was shorting this one. Alex said he was going to avoid it because it was a hot chick. So um, read the watch list, pay attention. And uh, if you are going to short things like this after a stuff move, make sure that your hard stops in. That's all I'm going to say. The good part about this chart is that he didn't go back and he didn't fight and reattack and keep trying to short all the way up. Um, he just kind of ended up, uh, you know, stopping out and that was it. So that's pretty good. But again, use your hard stop and, uh, you know, you're way better. I'm not sure what that line is underneath. I have no idea what that. Oh, that's Joe. Shit. Yeah. I was like, where the fuck did that come from? It's the artist. Um, so, yeah um that's all i uh that's all i've got to say Vic, next yeah I, I i agree i think uh the, the only thing i would add is that if, if you're going to take a shot like this this is where i talk about you know dipping my toe in the water you know taking a, a really small tester trade to get that first position on and if it starts to work out and starts to move lower get below view up then you can start adding on a little bit more size so if you're going to do if you're going to try a trade like this uh you know just keep your first initial entry small and i tell you keep your your losers so small so that you can really add to your winners and and not you know go full bore in your first entry. So, but other than that, yeah, I think it's a, a viable thesis for sure. Claudio, I don't have anything to add. I think it's a nice stop. That said, uh, I would have. I, I don't trade the the first fifteen minutes, so that is to avoid this kind of shit. But there, I know that there's people here that love trading the first the volatility of the first fifteen minutes. Oliver, I don't know if you're gonna add anything or. Yeah, it's pretty much a good stop. I mean, he tried it and stopped out pretty good to me. Sweet. And next up we have Joe. Yeah, I just, I don't think it's a death line setup. I don't know if this was just confusing uh, to them as like what setup they were particularly looking for here. I like the entry. I like the stop loss. I like the potential trade. I just... I don't want there to be confusion later that this is what a death line setup looks like. This is not what a death line setup looks like. This is one of those, um, what Tosh calls kind of like the, the death candle. You know, I'm going to assume this green line is VWAP. Um, and, you know, you usually see the washout below VWAP and then short the pop and then you get the fade down to, you know, 550, 525, something like that. But this is this is not what you would classify as a death line. So, good stop or good good entry, good stop, just not the right setup categorization. So I just just for the recording, don't want anybody to get confused on is this a death line and are we condoning these types of entries like this? This is not what a death line chart should look like. Hundred percent, and I think for this one it's just the stock selection like if this was a broken chart we probably would have faded but because we're doing so much volume because it's the you know most popular ticker on the day these ones are going to be a little harder um this one i i mean the one thing i wanted to say on this one is that and you can't really see but uh whoever angel is i don't know if it's a guy or a girl there are some guys named angel um you know uh started in around six got up into the seven area you know you might want to consider stopping out unless your plan is to risk a dollar um, most people's plan is not to risk a dollar i will say that so you know you you really want to make sure that you're not fighting i know this this trade was one that alex ended up losing on as well uh there's nothing wrong with it just maybe you know if you're in around six and we're up at seven you know that's a good time to stop out right um, no hard stop, ship myself before exiting manually. Thanks for pointing that out, Joe. Um, yeah, right. You need hard stops in. This is a problem. I'm, I, there's so many weekend mentoring charts that are like good entries, but you know, when they're wrong, they don't have a hard stop in. I, and I don't understand. Like there are like five charts today where it would have been good, 
if they had have just stopped out where they were risking, but instead they keep fighting and fighting and fighting. Stock appeared broken. But the thing is, is that we start doing millions of volume. We start getting over VWAP. We start moving, right? And then people, people don't have a plan to stop out. In my opinion, your first, you know, you're, you should really be planning your, your entry, your exit, and your stop. I mean, that's how professional traders trade, right? You should even be looking where you're going to stop out before you enter, right? And so this is a, a situation of just kind of, right? Yeah, right where Joe wrote that, right? You know, 620, that's a good stop, right? That, you know, that's, that's great. So, I mean, in my opinion, I would just be saying, uh, you know, stop out and just stick to your risk levels. That's all I have to say on this one. Vic? Yeah, I agree. Uh, not a whole lot to add. Just, you know, you, you really got to be, this is, this is one of those typical adding to a loser kind of thing, right? Hoping for a, a fucking a move back down. It's, it's really not a, and like Joe's just put in there, right? Bad sign for a short. That's, that's when it crushes the resistance with that much momentum, you should have been bailing on that fucking thing and then waiting for a better opportunity to get back in. Uh, and then, it, so this could have been two trade sequences, right? Big picture. You could have stopped out at 620. And try to get back in again at what 680, uh, and then maybe take a little profit. And then if it zips by you again, you bail on the rest, and then you just you fucking let it go. I'd have walked away <laughs> and waited for re something really substantial to show me that this thing is is pretty much done. Some kind of big stuff move, uh, which didn't happen until later. But I mean, by 10:30, I'm done anyway, and, and so are a lot of other guys. So uh, that's that's really all I got to add to this one. Claudio. Oh, you're muted, bro. It's, be, it's because when I don't unmute myself, Tom will pound on me. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, to me, I, I don't know why why they saying that this is a low hanging fruit because it once it went. Uh, I'm assuming that before the day before it was really high, but ever since this opened at 9:30, it never went down. So that's the only thing I'm gonna add. Okay. Oliver. Yeah, obviously putting a stop at, I mean, it's a seven line, but <laughs> maybe, maybe even if you did put a stop at that seven line, it would have stopped out at, or at 740s anyway. Yeah. Joe, or yeah, Joe. The, the ads, uh, so I put that rectangle there. That's the first 30 minutes of the day. And when you're trading low-hanging fruit, Bao has talked about this in countless webinars that he used to do on the, the trading fish stuff. The first 30 minutes of the day is the best time to short 